So I don't know if I got a check bag or not, but I'm about to find out. Shout out to the big homie who booked me this ticket, aka AG. Man. You looking fresh? Don't be afraid to tell me if I'm looking handsome. If I'm looking handsome, you feel me? Yeah. Yo, and shout out to the Move It driver. Y'all need to download Move It. M O V E I T. When y'all got a bike, when y'all need a transportation for the cheap, for the low. Oh, guy got me here expeditiously. Let's roll. And we made it through. Okay, so I did not have a check bag as a um, part of the ticket. But I was able to stuff my book bag into my handbag and then walk through a boat. It is what it is. Let's see what the motion is, bro. We finally made it into the terminal. Right now, I need to know exactly what time it is. And where's my gate? It leaves at 5.55. Y'all know I ain't got a cell phone, so... It is currently 4.50. Yes, it is. 4.50 on the slot. Dumagetti is 1.32 on time. Boarding gate is 1.32 to Dumagetti. All right, bro. Let's get it popping, bro. We live, baby. Wait a minute. I know y'all seen that flood. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Bro. Now, I walked down here just in time. Even though I had like an hour left. And it was perfect because they were just getting everybody on a shuttle bus to go to the actual plane and we in seat a1 this me hi so we're the vicinity of tal lake and tal volcano which you should see on the left side then at about 12 minutes uh, into the flight that would put us over Verde Island in Batangas. Dumagetti, Philippines, aka Negros. Let's talk about it. Okay, so shout out to my big homie G who's inviting me out here to his province area. He realized I wasn't having too much of a good time in Manila. He said, hey bro, we need a reset. Come down here to Dumagetti. So he flew me out to Dumagetti and off rip as soon as we got off the plane a brother realized i was where i needed to be you just feel the home there's something about being around people who speak Bisaya. it just resonates with me it just resonates with me hi welcome to the baguette thank you oh, welcome to the a, a city of gentle people city, city of gentle people, people. thanks hi. you guys heard that welcome to dumagetti let's see how it goes uh, so off rip, people over here is staring and asking about basketball. I almost forgot that I was in the Philippines. I almost forgot I was in the Philippines. Anyways, let's go see what's up, man. Did y'all know they ain't got no stoplights or street, street signs out here? These people just drive, baby. Like. My bro picked me up on a motorcycle and we flying through the block so that we can get to his crib. There ain't no red light, yellow light, green light, blue light, purple light, me light. These folks is just driving with each other. Now, apparently they got a system because I didn't see no accidents. But something about that just told me like, hmm, I know the folks out here making babies all the time. I don't know. I don't Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just know that babies are, are being made every day out here. It's, 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 giving, it's giving that. First thing I see was a Jolly Bee. You guys in America, listen to me. Filipinos love them some chicken. I am convinced that the Philippines is the, the, is the headquarters of chicken rice and watermelon now for my black people in america don't take this for sarcasm because i know we love our chicken and our watermelon and then for the ones who don't who gives a f what i'm telling you is here in the philippines one thing for sure is you're gonna run into some good chicken you're gonna run into some watermelon and you're gonna run into some rice with every freaking meal now I say that because as we're riding through Dumagetti for my first day, by the way, it's my first night in town. We ride past a restaurant 
eight times in eight different locations. And this restaurant is called Jolly Bee. Now, for my Filipino people, they love them some Jolly Bee. Me, honestly, it's okay. Now, they got this Jolly Bee in America as well, but I never had it. Maybe it wasn't in my size of town. I'm just I'm just curious why Filipino people go to Jolly P when there's so much good chicken on the actual streets for 20 pesos. Maybe they go for the Salisbury steak. Maybe they go for the ambiance. Maybe I, I don't I don't know. But one thing for sure, when you pull up to the Philippines, you're gonna catch about 69 Jolly Bees on the corner and about seven McDonald's. Uh. So we make it to the place. He lives by the beach. We got cows and goats in the backyard and shit. He's like, yo, you hungry? I'm gonna take you to a nice spot to eat. I'm like, for sure, let's do it now. Again, this, this is my own ignorance, but I've never been here. But the name of this place is Dumaguete and the bigger name is Negros, Negros Oriental. So I'm thinking like, okay, we about to be seeing black people. We about to be seeing the hood for real. Like, I don't really know what I'm about to see, but I'm interested in seeing what's popping, right? Okay, something like chauffeur. Yeah, yeah. Bro, so first of all, tell the people who you are, where we at, what's up? Um, I'm G, also known as Passport Pro G. We're in the Philippines, Dumaguete. Uh, we came to Cafe Racer because it's a hot little spot. We got, they got some great food. They got obviously some music. We're gonna have a nice little time. And then afterwards, we're gonna go to Why Not so you can see what the club scene is out here. Let's see what the vibe is, you guys. First night at Dumaguete, man. First night, let's see what's up. So we slide to a restaurant, man. It's a cafe, but this cafe is jumping. I'm talking about when we walked up, and you know me, I keep my camera on deck everywhere. Light camera, action, baby. We pull up, they open the doors for us. The DJ just started snapping. Shout out to the DJ, I do not know your name, bro, but it's like when he seen two brothers come in the building, he just turned it all the way up to the max. I kid you not, better than all the DJs I heard in Thailand and all the DJs I've heard here in the Philippines so far, so. Y'all, I'm fucking with the DJ in here, bro. Hey, you crushing it, bro, no cap. Most deaf, most deaf. I've been in this bar for about a half an hour with my homie. When I say he dropping it better than the, the DJs at the clubs, this is a restaurant. It's a restaurant and he eating. Always show respect. Yo. This young guy at this restaurant, man, he needs a raise. Maybe we, if you see this video, young man, from the, um, the cafe spot that I'm about to show a picture of. Tap in with me, brother, tap in. Anyways, bro, we get there, we catching vibes. It's ladies looking at us from left and right. I'm kinda used to that, it doesn't matter. And we're looking at the food, man. He ordered some steak, I ordered some seafood. It was bussing, it was bussing. So we got a couple drinks in us, we sitting there vibing, and he's like, yo, bro, this next spot we're going to is the real hot spot. All right, cool, for sure. So, we drive off. We make it to the next hot spot. The next hot spot is a spot called, mm, you see the picture. I won't even say the name. So the restaurant was bussing, and now we're at a place called Why Not? Let's see how it goes, man. Like, again, I don't know what to expect. Let's just see how it goes, bro. He said he'd been here before and it was a vibe. So that's what we came here to see, the vibe. Bro, can you tell them what that is? Like, this is a uh, lomboy. So basically they just take tobacco directly off the plant, from a tobacco plant, they dry it out. They take the leaf, the outer leaf. It's from the lomboy tree and it's like a, a really dry fruit like it tastes like your 
best way I can describe it is like it tastes like you're eating wine. How dry it is. But they take that leaf, they dry, they cut it in half, they dry it up, and then they roll it. And then you put the tobacco in here, and it's just a pre-rolled uh, or your self-rolled cigarette. So it's really without the nicotine. It has nicotine. Oh, where is that? It's without the chemicals that they put in cigarettes. Without the chemical, uh, the, okay. So it's an original cigarette. That's that's the the original. All organic, grass fed. Oh, grass fed. <laughs> oh, this where we at? You guys. Listen to me. One thing about America I miss is when you go to the club or when you go to the bar, though it may be more intimidating or aggressive or like when you're outside, there's a higher chance of rejection in America. You know you're not really around so many pros. Uh, pros, AKA the women who goes. Now, immediately we walk into the spot Pay our way to get in. You feel me? It's a vibe. I got my fit on. He got his fit on. We both got our equipment. It's, we're just here to have a good time and vibe and kick it right. We get in. All eyes on me. Yeah. All eyes on me. You can't even record at this point because we're not trying to make everybody uncomfortable. But what I noticed was at least out of the 30 men that were there, which is a nice number, by the way, compared to that, the amount of women. Out of the 30 men that was there, 20, 24 of them were 60 and up. And that's the last six of them, we would count it as two. So there was probably like four guys in there who weren't disabled and moving dysfunctionally. But guess what? Everybody in there was dancing. Everybody in there was having a good time. The ladies was turned up and they was definitely looking good. <clears throat> they didn't even know Big Kuda was pulling up and they was looking good. But it just alarmed me a little bit because I'm like, okay, these ladies are extremely comfortable around these old guys. I'm getting the idea here that this is one of those clubs where, you know, let the best pockets win. Whoever's willing to pay for it tonight is going to win. Now, it was a vibe. We danced. We got our boogie on. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not that guy. Right? I'm just not that guy. So, if you're here in Negros, I need you to comment below. Where do I go to get that real local experience? Because, yeah, I'm not the guy for the tourist traps, and I'm not the guy to, to be around all the pros, you know. I, I don't mind being in the environment, but I want to be where the real natives are. And then two, who taught y'all to dance like that? Because these folks was in there really getting it in. I'm talking about squatting and bitterly and bottling. Yeah, day one and Negro's Oriental complete. Let's see what day two is looking like. I really, really hope it's fun. I'm gonna keep y'all updated. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, you're crazy. Like, push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. You heard what she said.